Hi, and welcome to another episode. What is this? this is 2.0. 2.0. Of the River City Knits podcast. My name is Enid. I'm mm. Elisa. And I'm Amanda. Yeah. Yay. And We're, we. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to you, reporting to you, I should say, from San Antonio Gas Apocalypse 2017, day number five. 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 So, all future podcast episodes will be done mobily. Because we will no longer have any gas to get anywhere. <laughs> She's just kidding. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. We're not sure. Yet. We're not sure. <laughs> We're not sure. These people are nuts. People are panicking, hoarding and gas. And hoarding and hoarding gas ridiculously. My fear is that I just, I don't understand. Gas does not store well in a trash can. We've seen <laughs> pictures of people putting... This dude had two large trash cans, and he's put those plastic ones, the made, rubber made. Yes. He's putting gas in those, and that's straight out of a, was that Sunny in Philadelphia? Have yeah. Have you seen that show? I haven't seen it, but somebody it's posted It's just plain it. out of ignorance is what that well, is. Well, they just happen. They're just crazy. But They're it crazy. doesn't store well. The stuff gets humidity in it, and then you're going to ruin your gas, and you won't be able to... You know, you won't be able to use it in your car. You'll ruin your car, so. And we all know how quickly it evaporates, so. Yes. Hopefully, everybody who is hoarding 110 gallons, because I filled two 55-gallon barrels at the gas station, I hope it evaporates quickly and you're stuck at home. <laughs> Maybe that was a little harsh. She's just but, kidding. Okay. No, not really. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, for one, refused to stand in line, but I was forced to stand in line on Saturday. I had to stand in line on Saturday, not, not stand, but sit in line, mm -hmm. and um, that was crazy. If I had to listen to this one lady, she says, no, no, they're letting other people go on the other side. The, the gas station was split in two, so people on the street were getting, um, what do you call it, corralled into one side of the gas station, and um, the, where I was in line, they were using the other half, and um, I was at the local HEB and all the managers were out there. It was really, really cool. Yeah, shout out to our local gro local grocery store, H-E-B, because Enid was saying that it was all managers out there <clears throat> helping direct traffic, and some dude in a big truck tried to cut in line. You were telling me? No, I was just some little man. He was trying to play it off and come in, and the, the manager's like, not today, sir. Heck, get on right on <laughs> by. <laughs> you know He's where like, the end of the line the is. The guy's like, well, how long is it going to take? No telling, mister. Just move it along. Move it along. Thank you so much. Have a great day. So they, they quickly organized. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. And it's H-E-B, and Texas is loving on H-E-B right now because they are taking care of all of our Houston and Gulf Coast neighbors and Port Aransas and Rockport, mm -hmm. and they're just, they've been fantastic. So a big shout-out to them to and all the other relief organizations that are taking care of those mm -hmm. people because it's, um, and a little, a little update on that for those of you that may not be in Texas. Um so we, we've hit the point where the hurricane's long gone, and some places are still flooding. The rivers have yet to crest. A lot of places it's receding. Um, but some of the things you may not know is that a lot of places like Rockport, um, yeah. Port Aransas, they're, they're devastated. devastated. They're not livable. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's no resources. Their school districts are closed. Um, there's places in Houston, I know Kingwood High School, that they're not opening this year, period. It flooded up to their second floor. So all of these students that, you know, have to go to school, they're being displaced. So at Kingwood High School, they're going to some other high schools. And I, I know down on the coast, they're telling them wherever they evacuated to, to enroll their children. So they're out of a home. They're out of school district. They're away from their friends. And now all of these other schools are going to have to make room for all this. So... You may, if you live anywhere around those areas, San Antonio, Houston, the outside surrounding areas, you may want to start looking into what do these schools need? They're going to need supplies. They're right. going to need money for books. They're going to need, yeah. it's so much, it's become so much more than just food and money and water and gas it's and temporary housing. This is now a permanent thing. And it's, you know, we all talk about Houston TV and social media is all Houston, Houston. And so did we at 1.75, but it really is all the other tiny little towns. Um, my husband's aunt had to rip out all of her house, had to take all the innards out of her house, except for one room yeah. that was salvageable, but everything else 
Um, but apparently um, there's been a lot of groups down there helping people and they're just taking care of business within an hour. It would have taken her days to do on her own. The teams are coming in and helping these people out. So I know a lot of people um, for the holiday weekend had planned on, and pro oh, many people did, make it down to um, to the smaller communities mm -hmm. and were helping with rip, ripping stuff out and mm -hmm. cutting down trees. There was a lot of trees that fell. Um, my sister's brother-in-law, so my brother-in-law's brother, has he lives in Rockport, and he's got three school-age kids, and they were told, you know, register wherever you are. Um, you're basically homeless. Right. That's exactly what the like the email from the town said. Um, I just can't. You know, you can it. start looking for um, support because of your status. And um, his wife's going to be homeschooling the kids, and he's kind of commuting back and forth to help work on stuff in the town. And and he's a high school math teacher, so I, it's like, where is he going to work? How does right. that? You know, what happens with that? And it's. It's very real. Well, yeah, and the teachers, you know, what happens mm -hmm. to them and the economic impact is mm -hmm. just, you know, that that's going to be felt for a long time, what a long is, time to come. So what does that mean for the schools here? Are they going to bring in more portables, create more portables, so, bring in more kids? I or? saw some press releases um, from SAISD saying that they are available and they have space to accommodate kids in, their, in the school district there. Okay. So... Um, I'm not sure about the other school districts. SAISDs are San Antonio Independent School District, so it's kind of like in the center of the city, um, not some of the outline or suburban um, school districts. So, yeah, I mean, it's its impact is just continuing through, and um, this is something that's, you know, obviously very close to us. We're 150 miles from the coast, so... We have families on the coast. We, that... Yeah, and, and so um, we don't want to make the whole episode on this, but no. it is something that's definitely part of our conversations at all times, I true. feel. True. So. Very true. And go away, Irma. We don't <laughs> want to see you, Irma. Turn and go somewhere, somewhere else. anywhere else. Go back to the ocean. Um, <laughs> someplace in the ocean. Yes, don't go anywhere near land. Yeah, so Same. no more gas hoarding. It's It seems kind of ridiculous to me that people actually fell for it. And it, this is where, you know, you got to social media responsibly. It's like we say things, we do things, and it's, I'm going to get philosophical. Y'all better prepare yourself. But we do things, and it impacts, like, if you just kind of throw a little pebble in the water, and it makes a ripple, and that ripple just continues. But social media is like throwing a big giant boulder into that pond and it's like and you know it just explodes and it goes out of proportion people only read one sentence and then don't follow it up with maybe a educational web search yeah do your research we don't just run out of people the refineries aren't making a gas gas for the week they have storage storage of gas it's just it's just not how it works I I don't know exactly how it works, but I'm pretty sure that's not how it works. They certainly don't store it in Rubbermaid um, uh, containers. Containers, and so just be patient. I don't. I don't. I you know I don't want to get political either. But some people are crying out that the you know the government should help regulate, and it really shouldn't be because once you get the government involved, you can't get them out of your pot. So it's okay. up to the shop owners. You know, put a limit. Hey, you do. You put a limit on uh, sale items. Right? Mm -hmm. 20, 50 percent off, but you have a limit of two. You should do that for gas. I mean, you really just need 10 gallons of gas a week, unless your car's a gas guzzler. I don't know. Maybe we get crucified for what I said, but <laughs> let, the, let the comments begin. But I'm just saying, just to slow down the panic, to kind of put a break on it, you know, 10 gallons of gas, $20, $30 until everything catches up. Because it's still that ripple. I see that HEB gets gas and people start lining up and lining up and they've got, you know, trailers with gas cans. And I just, I don't know. True. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> just calm down. So I'm trying to calm down because I said, oh, I'm going to work on this project while we're doing the podcast. And um, I realized I'm at Did the point. Did your tension at, get really tight? N oh. Well, my tension's always tight. <laughs> so I have a really tight tension. So <gasps> oh, I was like, Ugh. but I, um, I'm doing my heel. So I'm going to do uh, a heel turn during the podcast. 
so we'll see if it ends up getting tinked. Dun, at the end. Dun, dun, dun. Tonight Seriously. on Elisa's Monday Night Knitting, you'll see her rip out. Said, I know. So I then I think, I'm just turn. kidding. She's going to be fine. Look, I have a heel turn. So. That's all I've been able to do this week. <laughs> it's been a little busy. So um, Enid and I did a little impromptu road trip and but before we left I was at this point of the project and during my during the trip I did most of the stuff so because mm-hmm. I was passenger I rode shotgun um so that was kind of excited to that's get, a lot of knitting yeah to do that in about a little less than two hour drive okay so did I jump yeah no. was I supposed to not jump no it's good okay jump. but do we, do we want to talk I, about that why we were there because that's really exciting let's go ahead and talk we, about why we were there or let's talk we about why we were there about before we drink it all, because this is... Well, I'm thirsty, yeah. So, um, I have a tea subscription to Plum Deluxe Tea. They're based out of Portland, Oregon. And um, Andy, like, when we did the first podcast, he's like, oh my god, it was so great. It was a lot of fun. Well, I think it was so great. I don't know if that's exactly what he said. But anyway, he offered to send us some tea just to kind of, for us to kind of enjoy and sip on. And my response is, sounds great, but we're in Texas, so we definitely still are drinking iced tea even though it is September. Mm. So um, he gave us some different samples, and this one is the current conversation oolong tea. It's a oolong tea oolong. and woodsy, and it has some tart fruits. And actually, when Amanda sat down, she's like, who smells good? And I think, <laughs> I think it's the tea. I think it's the tea. I'm, like, not smelling good, I feel like. So it's really, really <laughs> yummy. <laughs> well, it's just like I've been running around. I've been, like, all over this morning picking up those donations and stuff. So I've just been, like, busy well, morning. I took a shower before I came. <laughs> I took a shower, but that was, like, <laughs> So. Here's our tea. And you'll notice current all conversation. Of our matching Yes, we cups. have matching cups. Sip, 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 knit. And then. That's my name. Our names. Because we're Dorothy like that. <laughs> yes, we went to a retreat earlier this year, and we knew we needed matching Wine glasses. Cheers. Tea, tea glasses. That's pretty good. That is good. Mm-hmm. Mm. So a big thank you to Plum Deluxe Teas. Um, and do you want to talk about what we're going to do with said tea? Yeah. I'm to keep drinking tea. Because he, he said that. He said, yeah. And then he sent another pouch. And then he said a third pouch, which is the Comfort Blend Black Tea. It's... um. It has uh, black tea, cinnamon, orange peel, ginger, clove, and other delicious things. And um, so what we thought we would do is um, we have a Ravelry group that we started. And so um, we'll probably uh, do a drawing, not for this show, but for the next one of everyone who's uh, who's joined in on our Ravelry group, which is River City Knits podcast. And it'll include this pouch of tea, which is, I think, about two ounces. I believe it's about two ounces from Plum Deluxe. Um, this is um, so we'll announce the winner next, next, next for the time. next podcast. Yeah, in two weeks. This is a Lone Star Arts little sweet, awesome notions bag, and inside uh, we have a little um, keychain from Yarnistry Shop. She's from the UK, and in the back it has the Kitchener stitch. Um, she does a lot of laser cutting and stuff, and. Um, I bought a couple of these because there was a little sale that she had. So uh, we have these three Very items that will be we'll be announcing uh, for our next episode. So if you have not joined us on Ravelry, go give us a join. You'll be um, eligible to win this little package. And you can also join our discussion about Mystery Knitwell. Yes. It's going pretty good. Is it really? I'm the absent knitter on <laughs> Ravelry. <laughs> I'm there, but I'm not. <laughs> I have a little, I don't know, I say that a lot, but I have a little PTSD with uh, these groups, so I kind of get on them, read them, and run away. Run away? <laughs> you don't interact? Not You're really. a lurker? I'm a lurker. I used to not be a lurker, but when I was going to school, that's that's that was our main forum. So, it's just, I don't know. I'll get over it someday. <laughs> I do every once in a while. I kind of will do a binge read try to catch up and reply when I can. But. So what else you got working, anyway. got going here? Oh, so in addition to my socks, um, I sometimes go to a Saturday morning group at a Starbucks, which is at the other end of town, but I really like the ladies, which is why I keep going. And um, last week, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before I was there, and two of the ladies were working on the Hitchhiker Beyond shawl. 
and I was just so enamored with it. And I just thought it looked really pretty. Um, and I liked it. I tried on one of them because it is kind of a thin shawl. It's not super thick, mm -hmm. which is kind of great for our winters here in South Texas because um, it has really cool texture and you can kind of just wrap it around with your jacket and it's kind of scarfy looking, but not shawly looking, if that makes sense. But not just like a rectangular sh scarf design. So it's got these really cool teeth and um, I'm not even a third of the way through it. And I, um, I want to be like Enid. So I, <laughs> no, just I just in stopped in the middle of a project. Cause <laughs> Enid's always stopped in the middle of a project. Usually I'm like, I have to finish this row, but I, I don't know. Probably I had to go somewhere quickly, and so I just stopped my knitting. But um, it goes the whole length. I, I can't. I can't. It like freaks me out. But um, it's really fun teeth, and um, this is some sock yarn um, from Classic Elite Yarns. Actually, I bought it here at the shop, mm -hmm. and um, it has like a cool. There's a cool look to it. Alpaca socks. It's alpaca mm. socks is Classic the, Elite. So um, I like the gray. Oh, I usually wear bright colors, so I feel the gray is like a good neutral for me. But mm -hmm. if I, I'm really grooving on them. This may be some like gifts for friends if I can finish this, like can turn them out kind of quickly. I started this on, I believe like Tuesday. So Oh, you're moving right along. So yeah, it's kind of fun. And I've got the pattern memorized for the first third of it. <laughs> but then like... Um, I have to have the pattern out because it's like my training wheels. I'm like, okay, they're there. So but in case I forget. So, so yeah, that's what I'm working on socks and this. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Awesome sauce. And you? So I'll go ahead. Um, the socks that I showed you in episode one still aren't finished. They have progressed no further, um, which is really sad considering I only have heels to finish on them. Just the afterthought heels and they're done and that's it. Um, my starting point, I've made some progress. I was about, half? this is the second half and I've moved on to clue two and I'm feeling pretty good about this, but I was here about here the last time, um, whining about having to do twisted rib. I'm pretty sure. So I've moved beyond that and now you can see I've made a couple of inches progress. But of course I haven't driven anywhere this weekend really. So I've had a lot of time to work on it. And I'm then the, I'm used, I'm on the big section of the twist, oh. so I'm knitting slower because I don't want to get to that section. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what the hangup is about the twisted thread. I don't know, it doesn't. And then in episode 1.75, I kind of was working on this and I teased it, but in three weeks since the last time we were here, I knit something from start to finish and blocked it and wove in the ends. And it's a hundred percent complete. Yay! So this is the Raina shawl, and I know a lot of you out there have already knit this. I'm a little slow on the on the bandwagons here, um, but the yarn is sca Savvy Skeins in her diabolical color, um, and it's on it's on a superwash merino sock base um, you know that is. she used to call San Antonio sock, and I think she's since changed them, so I have no idea what base it would be on now. But it's really pretty, and I played a little bit of yarn chicken. I didn't actually, this section here isn't as long as it should be. Um, I had to cut out about three repeats to have enough yarn to finish, because it calls for 400 yards, and my skein was 400 yards, and you know, that never works out hardly ever in the knitter's favor. <laughs> Unless <laughs> our tight knitter. are different. Um, okay. So I cut it out, you can't even tell. Um, it's mm -mm. pretty, and it's a good length too. So it's a good length, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my daughter has been thinking of six hundred and four ways that she can wear this, and I can film it and show it to you guys. Um, I think that's so a fantastic <laughs> idea. <laughs> you that's may be idea. seeing some of that, um, and some of them are quite, quite hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and before I move on, I do have to issue a retraction from episode one. When we were talking about the, picking the colors for this shawl, I showed Molly the section that we were talking about her, to which she immediately turned to me and said, but mom, I did help you pick out those colors. Oh, <laughs> <fun day out. laughs> So I went, huh? I don't remember this. Oh, she does. <laughs> she vividly remembers that I had about three different color palettes that I was choosing from 
and whether or not I was going to go with the orange or the white. And she did, in fact, help me pick this color palette here. So my apologies, Molly. Um, <laughs> so does that mean this will be her finished object at the end of the day? There, there's no chance that I'm actually keeping this. <laughs> You're I, anti I, I know that. You're anti Enid. She knows. Yes. <laughs> yes. So there, there's no chance she's letting me keep this. Um, it'll be the blanket size for her. I She's know. very tiny, so. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. so funny. But we... so that's our first retraction. <laughs> On our road trip yesterday, we were listening to a year living Danishly. Yes, Ooh, and she will use this to get uger, 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 or something like that. It's a Danish word that has no real translation except getting cozy. Getting cozy, yeah, just to, to be cozy, to, to find a cozy, cozy spot. Yes, it's not a, it's not an, it's not a exact translation, but that's as good as it gets. Get you good, you good. Okay, yes. So and then, oh, and my my recent bout of star itis, I have not cast on for anything. Are these else. all the mystery knit alongs? I went pattern shopping. What? Yes. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. So I bought the what the fade. What the pattern? pattern? And I bought the Guadalupe River mystery knit along. And so now that I've seen at least clue one, and I think they're on clue three, three, three. Mm -hmm. they're both beautiful. Beautiful. And this one, since the first clue dropped Thursday? Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's brioche. And it's two color brioche. Gorgeous. So I could use all of that information that Bristol Ivy taught me way back in March that I've never ever used <laughs> to use. So, so I was on Instagram earlier and Bab Knits, um, she um, had her, she had her What the Fade cover. So you, she, there wasn't spoilers, but I haven't bought the pattern yet, but I swiped it because I still, I'm still scared of brioche. And um, mm. the colors she <laughs> chose are just gorgeous. And her handle on Instagram is Bab Knits, B-A-B Knits. I think I've seen hers. Yes, and it's it's gorgeous. And it's just... Is there pictures? Just the pictures of the colors? Just, I, just the pictures. Yeah. Yeah, this is just... Charts. Yeah. And so... Yeah, I think I may have to learn brioche at some point very soon. Yeah. Like, I I learned it while she was teaching it. And then I, I never finished what we started. Even you might it's really you might know a couple of people who could help you out. They could help you. Um, so you guys can help me figure out I'm, who can help me out. I'm just saying. <laughs> if only there was some <laughs> device some, some that I could people. watch some things or people. <laughs> or people what I could that ask. Thing? People that you see on the daily. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know what I want to do. I have a whole color palette picked out for the What the Fade that you can look at on my Instagram. And it's all in yak, which is, is super it? yummy. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it penguin? Yes, and it's six colors. So now we're back to that. The that multiple. How many, the multiple Can you wear the fade with yarns that already fade? Sure. I don't see why not. Like gradients? Like Ooh, gradients? gradients would be fun. <laughs> like gradients? Like barn owl yarns barn gradients? Barn owl yarns gradients? <laughs> that would be kind of fun. Because really we really do have some speckles, but I don't know. I'll have to mess around. We're in my shop. This is my lovely fireplace, so this is a nice little place in my barn owls over there. That's why I'm That's why we're looking that way. <laughs> <laughs> we're podcasting and yarn shopping all yes, the same Yes, that time. usually yeah. happens. Multitasking. Where is a yarn barn? So that's kind of where I am with I the like mystery knit along. Oh, 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 and I did see that Stephen West has a new mystery knit along yes. coming out. And I already have an idea in my head. Um because I've dyed some mini skein packs mm -hmm. that the My Little Pony, or what I call yes. Speckled Pony packs, that I, I adore. I love them. They're just Very probably happy. my most favorite thing I've ever done. That I want to dye some full skeins that pick all those colors out. Mm -hmm. And then I would have that kit. So I'm in mystery knit along purgatory you think you, right now. Well, you probably won't have, you won't have them ready for a yarn crawl, will you? No, and I have no time. I did no time so I want to knit all these things but I never get to because this I have kind of a crazy year it's kind of thrown yes. some things off. I know it has been it's been really and I have <clears> this <throat> that I'm doing as a super special What's thing that? that I haven't cast on with a super secret pattern that's yet to be released I can't segue into our next okay. <laughs> oh and this is in melted crayons and this is a sport weight 
set. So in about mm. six weeks, I can show you what this will be. Maybe four weeks. Can I squish it? Yes. Of course. <laughs> So, all this is leading up to yarn crawl, y'all. I'm so excited. Okay, so remember that that thing that I, like, let y'all peek at the first episode? I finished it. All the ends are woven in. Oh, she's got them. It's lovely. Isn't it beautiful? It's she's called the Lotus Blossom Shawl. It's so gorgeous. I forgot the name of the designer. I will have it in the show notes. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but this yarn is Leon Alexander's exclusive colorway for the yarn crawl. It will be here at my shop the first weekend for the trunk, his trunk show. Isn't it gorgeous? It's beautiful. And it's he is beautiful. a super nice guy. I met him last year at Yarn Crawl. Yes. And if you're able to come out here or see him in any of the trunk shows, do it. He's this really, really nice person. He took the artwork from the Save the Date postcard and created this um, colorway for us. So this, I had no idea that, cool? that was his. That was his like inspiration. Yeah. So are you gonna show him? Yeah. The so design. to me though, it's a pretty speckle, but it looks like because I did I did a lotus blossom right. So lotus blossom, koi ponds. If you really look at it, there's little white speckles, little red, and then all this little green bits. So it looks like a koi pond to me. I don't know. Just, but I'm also the freak that sees things in the clouds, so. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that shade. Anyway. Our very own cloud was So do y'all want to see what I have? Okay, so then Lisa and I went to, we went on a road trip. Two hour road trip to the kilt, the quilted, the kilted, the tilted kilt. No, no, the quilted. <laughs> you didn't have to go two hours to go there. <laughs> the quilted skein, the quilted skein, the quilted skein to get passports. Passports are here. Came back from the printers. I've picked all of them up for all the other shops in San Antonio. So as soon as everybody gets them in their hot little hands, by the time you see this podcast, they will be in everybody's shops and on sale. So $15 for the passport, the stamp card. This is a pass. This is actually the passport. This is the booklet. And then the first 1,200 people that buy their passports will get this awesome bag. Made of canvas. Made of canvas. It's nice got our bag. 11th annual, the dates, best little yarn crawl in Texas. And all the superstars and the awesome people that that uh, bring us, that bring you this great event, all the shops. So when you go to the shop, you get a little button and you've got a place marked to put your little button on. This is really a lot of fun. The so, best little yarn crawl is in October. It starts on October 6th to the 20th. To the 15th. To the 15th. So um, it's 20 shops. It's a lot of driving. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of trunk shows. A lot, a lot of, of fabulous indie shows. dyers will be there. Not that any person will be at the yarn barn the second weekend of yarn crop. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see this um, this thing little guy printed out. So if you see, there's the green, blue, the little reds, the little car, the, the truck, the really truck, truck, and the trailing scarf because hey, it's. 10 days of awesome shots. We need to get out and zoom, zoom. So check with your local yarn shop if you're here in Texas. Go get your passports because it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it is, it's it's so much fun. Um, I The group that I meet with on Saturdays, um, we're the ones who went together in the eight passenger van last year. And so um, we've been kind of chatting and kind of preparing and, and talking about talking about crawl and what the map is and everything too. So um, it's a lot of fun. In fact, the group, um, they've been um, crocheting cute little um, like market bags so they could have it for shopping. So I have a knitted oh, one, cute. so but they're, they've been doing, I don't crochet. So um, I, I, you know, the market bags have kind of gotten me wanting to crochet because there's some really cute styles mm -hmm. of crocheted market bags. Um, so, so yeah, so, I think with <laughs> with the I'm on the mic. <laughs> uh, me. I can't see right now. <laughs> the um, 
Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Hey. No, I'm totally cool. So, uh, what? So, what? What are the great things about going to? You go to each of the different shops. You get a stamp on your passport. You have your booklet that has information and and just tips and and all of that. But each yarn shop um, gives gives attendees a free two free patterns. It's so generous. I mean, that fifteen dollars. You get the booklet. You get your passport. You get two patterns, and then there's a discount on the yarn. Mm -hmm. And so generally, the yarn that's on the discount is what's with the pattern, generally. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's kind of fun because you get to look at the patterns. Like, is that something I want to do? Is that something I can do? Um, we all know I'm obsessed with socks, so I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to look for sock yarn during my crawl. I'm hey. thinking. Hey. I'm thinking. <laughs> And maybe kind of look at look at look at the patterns because I haven't really done that is getting the yarns for the patterns and stuff. So that's kind of I'm trying I'm planning I'm planning out my uh, what I'm gonna do for yarn crawl. I'm very excited. Can you tell? Yeah. It's so much fun. I love it. I really really enjoy it. It's also during a very busy time work wise, so it's a great mm -hmm. way to relax and just kind of get away from that for just a very short period of time and then go back to my crazy. So. Um, so yeah, so I'm trying to decide, you know, if I want to do some of the different patterns or, you know, find a few. I have an enormous Ravelry library. Maybe oh. find like three or four shawl patterns that I can have with me and I know what type of yarn and kind of look for those when I go shopping. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of options. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So do you guys have... Um, crawls in your neck of the woods i know some folks are remote live in remote areas other folks live in cities where they have access to different ones i know right. um dallas like in the has dallas has one they just had it mm -hmm. just a few weeks ago right yes. yes and i think the designer that designed this shawl she's from that area oh cool but she thought she might be coming down just just to try to make it i hope she does because that would be it would be really nice to meet her Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I know the D.C. area where I go to, that part of the country I go to a lot, they have a really cool metro yarn crawl. Um, yeah, like Maryland, Virginia, D.C. Oh, that would be a fun So um, I need to find out when it is. It helps. I have a sister. I have, I have, a, I have free housing while I'm there. So it's just nice. getting myself right. to D.C. And then I use public transport for the most part. Um, or Uber. Well, that's kind of public transport, I think. Um to to get places so um so yeah in fact i was just there this thing's moving sorry uh i was in dc uh three weeks ago and i had a chance to go <laughs> we're moving the table we had a chance to go to fiber space right before they move because they're in the middle of moving into their own space um from king street to prince street and I got to knit with a couple of other gals that I've met on Instagram. So um, that was a fantastic time, and we had a lot of fun. And we took some silly pictures. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that so, was awesome. So it was so, always fun. And then what else is going on? Stitches Texas is next weekend. If you're in the Dallas area or going to the Dallas area, are you going to go? I am not. I am not. We. I was originally supposed to be... At a conference the Tuesday and Wednesday after that. So I was going to be in last minute conference preparation mode because not only do I like do all of these nice crafty things and run my business from there and have a full time job, I decided it would be really, really fun if I was president of my local professional society. <laughs> Gosh, Amanda. <laughs> Which is a lot of fun. And I love those guys. And, yeah. You know, but we had. We were supposed to have a conference on the 13th and 14th or 14th and 15th. Uh, no, 12th and 13th. 12th and 13th. Um, <clears throat> so, or actually maybe Stitches is not this coming weekend, but the weekend after. I'm not sure. But anyway, it was going to be around the time of my conference. And, well, now that conference has been canceled because half of our membership is in Houston and... Oh, gosh. Um, those areas mm -hmm. and just cannot make it. And, you know, so I've had to reschedule, um, which was not a big deal, you know, that, they, of course, they were more than accommodating. Um, so that's freed up my weekend, but I still don't think... You'll make the drive go. up. I'm going to make the drive up. It's a, even though it's a long drive from here, it's, what, five hours? Four and a half, five hours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about so, that. Yeah. part of Dallas also. And I need to be getting ready for yarn crawl. 
and kidney you coming up and mm -hmm. all that because I haven't started any of that. And the time is growing short. I know. So I got some things to finish up for crawl here and I'm wake up in a cold sweat. Yeah. Not <laughs> oh quite to panic mode, but it, it's coming it's coming very, very soon. Very soon. And then school started and school we're, started. We're just exhausted. Exhausting. Exhaust. First weeks are always exhausting. Where you come home and your kids are just laying around by five o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. and don't want to move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, anybody oh. have anything? I just, yeah, I just went off into space. I'm sorry. It's like they like we, we died for a minute, like, and now is. oh, I forgot about that. Do we have a time? Uh, no, no. So, um, I on Instagram, I participate in a lot of different giveaways. A lot of you get tagged on things for me, and <laughs> I try not to go too crazy. Just kidding, I do. Um, so there was a contest, and um, I won. And it's a um, it was a crochet uh, knit crate, crochet crate, crate, crochet crate, knit crate, knit crate. I won! Yay! And it came with these three deliciously squishy, gorgeous, super chunky sugar bush, sugar bush um, in the colorway chill. It's very pretty color. It's gorgeous. Um, additionally, there's a beautiful crochet pattern. I think the color is Lasoli. Oh, it's not chill? Chill is the, the line. Oh, the line. Oh, the line. So all their bulky, bulky stuff is yeah. Lasoli. Lapis, 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 Lasoli. Lasoli. Italian for blue. Yeah, yeah. Like Lapis. Like Lapis. Lapis, Lasoli. Or Azul. 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 Um, and um it's italian italian sorry guys I'm just, sorry i was so exhausted that i'm like <laughs> slap happy and there's this really sweet bookmark I like um so that. i know it's really really, it's really sweet pretty. so um y'all what do i do with chunky weights i knit sock so I really want to do something fun with this. Um, I don't know. I, you're going to have to go pattern searching. I'm going to have to go pattern searching. If y'all have any such, I I, all my patterns are all fingering. Maybe, maybe <laughs> DK weight. Stay away from anything that wears hard because it's not super wash. And right. it's going to be super felty. You can already feel it. Yeah. I mean, it's sticky. I, yes, it is sticky. Oh, yeah. So sticky oh is not goodness. a bad thing so what a hat sticky is not a bad thing a hat, hat would be good something cozy so slouchy so how googly if it's cozy hmm? the living danishly hooger 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 y'all have to watch this or read it or audible it or we whatever. audibled it i'm actually going to download it also because i really enjoyed it i think we got to chapter three yeah and oh my god <laughs> it gets funnier it is a really funny book it's a year li living danishly danishly and her so. husband gets this great opportunity to go work for a Lego company in, in Denmark. and um, In a very remote, like, region of uh -huh. the country. Yeah. Not I'm like a Lego company? Yeah. Like, like Lego. Legos? Like, yeah. the Lego company is based out of, like, this Denmark. little remote little town. I did not know that. I know. Yeah. So this book is pretty awesome. I yeah. learned something new. Today. And she's got a British accent, so it's even more fun. It's great. She starts speaking with a British accent during our drive because <laughs> Cause she says things and I'm like practicing. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. Oh well, they goodness. went. So when, when things start to, to warm up, because in the wintertime, everybody gets hooger, they get cozy, and they like kind of shut themselves down and very, really focus on family. Family Cocoon. Are, yeah. Cocoon, and, yeah. That's what we call it in my house. We, we're we we're going to cocoon. Cocoon in. Hooger. Now you mm -hmm. got a new one. Hooger. 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 Ah. So shout out and thank you to Hands Occupy, oh, yeah. to Heidi, for this fantastic giveaway. Sorry, no, we're just, no, sorry. We're just chatting. We're all over this the place is, This today. is what we do. <clears throat> um, so yay. But seriously, if you have, I think, a it's hat, if you have a fun hat, hat pattern. We'll put up suggestions in the Ravelry group. Yeah. So stop on by. Make sure you sign up for that giveaway and give us your suggestions. Chunky yarn. Chunky yarn. Yeah, because the cowl, I think, would... It would... Mm. It's I think it would sell. It would sell too much. Yeah. 
I think so too. Unless you did a scarf that you would put on the lapel of your jacket, Ooh. like just under the jacket. Oh, under. just kind Not of like on you, and like just something decorative. Well, I was almost wondering. I would want to send it maybe to one of my friends who live like in places that actually get cold, because this is so maybe you can get two, Christmas knitting for your two sister. hats. Yeah, two hats out of there. this. This is yeah, Christmas knitting for my sister. Mm. Maybe one. Yeah, yeah. I could probably do two hats two with the three hats. skeins. Mm-hmm. Yay! Be super quick knits. In theory. <laughs> it will. That's bulky. You'd be like, 10 rows. Wow, I'm done. Look at that. And I'm done. It's like it's cotton done. candy. And then the weird thing will be is after you've knitted with that, jumping back into oh, this, it's gonna take your forever. hands are going to be like, what's happening? <laughs> I don't understand. This is a weird sensation. I don't know what's going on. So this is really cool. I know. You like that? Mm-hmm. We, we've got some technology upgrades for you all this week. Can you in see it in the shop? To our new, yes, you can see it in the shop. I'm trying to get mic. it out of the shop, but it's a pretty little it, microphone. That's why I was acting goofy earlier because I was getting a piece of paper to wipe my glasses, <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, the mic's gonna pick up the." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, I'm naturally loud, so I'm like, Ooh. "I don't know how loud it's gonna be when you do the editing." <laughs> well, hopefully, you can hear us better. Yes, because we were kind of quiet in the last episode. Mm-hmm. But hopefully, it helps. I, what do you think, guys? Do we have anything else? We do have some, well, some sneak peeks for next week. What are next, not next week, next podcast. Two weeks from now. Two weeks from now. What are we sneak peeking? We'll be two weeks closer to Yarn Crawl. Yes, that's right. And we've got... Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, how did we forget? See, I didn't bring notes this week. That's the problem. Well, like we had, we, we, we've been week. trying to be super organized and we have this whole thing and we're keeping, oh, we have this idea. But then like the gasopolis thing <laughs> just like messed everything up and it's just like, we have to talk about a bunch of other it's stuff like instead. If, if you're watching the nightly news in about four days, you, you the Mad Max guys, like that's, that's San Antonio. That's yeah. what we're going to be like, makeup and all. I don't think, I think it's Austin too. Yes, and Dallas. My and friend Dallas. from Dallas is in town, and she said that it was. It started actually earlier up there. It started like on Monday evening. We at least waited until Thursday of last week, Before where I had a three-hour commute home because of gas oh, right. Fourteen miles it took in you three th- hours. It took me three. I left with the, the medical center patty. at four, and I got home at three with a screaming two-year-old in the back seat of my car. Oh, that poor, oh baby. My God. poor baby. Poor so, baby. Poor Amanda. Yeah, that was that was kind of. Man, they got home. She was off. I'm like rocking in a corner. (laughs) (laughs) Like you do. (laughs) So, um, y'all know, I think that we're kind of obsessed sometimes, well, me always, with mustache yarns. And um, so she had a shop update. And um, I just happened, I don't know, maybe several times a week, I just go onto her her shop page to see what if anything's live maybe perhaps but um so uh that's what i did and i got a skein and it's like unicorn apocalypse 2.0 i know it's really cute i know it's purple i didn't bring it with me anyway and there was a note i was like super excited um we'll be doing a giveaway with um stacy at some point soon so that'll happen probably in the next within the next month for sure so um, we're really excited. Thank you, Stacy, for your Thank generosity. Thank you, Stacey. And um, who's also a super, super nice person. If you ever get to meet her in person, she's she's really cool. I met she her lives a here in San Antonio. She is local to us. So. Mm-hmm. so it's really, really exciting. So that's just a little sneak peek. We won't show you. We won't tell you all the details because you'll have to tune in for another episode, which will be a three. Episode three. Okay, so episode next three. week, what are we giving away? The tea. So don't forget to subscribe or join the Ravelry group. Mm-hmm. What else? Then the next, well, that week, we're also then going to introduce the giveaway and show yes. it and tell you what you need to do to win that one because yes. you don't want to miss out on that. I know because yes. it's mustache yarn. And um, I'll go ahead and tell y'all if you've seen it on my social media feed, I'm not, I'm not running a sale, but... If you purchase from my shop from now, throughout the month of September, I'm going to extend it through all of September, 15% of your order is going to be donated to Hurricane Harvey relief funds. And that's for Houston, that's for the Gulf Coast, that's that's for all. And I'm going to, I'm hoping to donate a lot of money, but even if it's not a lot, everything helps. Whatever, a dollar, two dollars, 
twenty dollars, it it all helps and it means something to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, so fifteen percent of of whatever you buy is going to be donated. Um, so go check out the shop, see if there's anything you like. And there's a lot of other dyers that are running similar um, similar things. So if you're interested in in that, then look around, visit my shop, visit others. Um, if you can be involved, get involved. Lolo did it, ran a mm-hmm. thing that ended on Thursday, and I was able to order skein, so I'm really excited. Um, Lemonade Shop is also, um, she's doing something really unique, and I think Whimsy Stitches is kind of involved with it, too. Is that the, the replacing the stash? Mm-hmm, replace the stash. So oh, that's amazing. That's There's a lot. So thank you to everybody for your love and generosity to Texas. Um, we all We all really appreciate it, even though we weren't directly affected with that we know so many people who were so thank you thank you thank you everybody and that's another wrap yep we'll see you in two weeks bye